Now let me explain the confidence in the Scottish economy. Uh, Scotland's a small, but it's an open and dynamic economy, and I believe the winds of globalisation blow strongly in favour of just such an economy. Uh, it's an argument which I suspect might be familiar to some people here. It's one that researchers here at the Centre for European Studies will find borne out day after day in the work that they do. Because among the, the big winners of globalisation have been the small dynamic trading nations of Europe, which have the skills and the flexibility to claim a major stake in the knowledge economy and the sectors of the future. If we take a, a fairly simple and direct measure of this, the United Nations has a, a human development index. Uh, it's an index which doesn't just measure gross domestic product per capita, you know, the conventional way of measuring economic success. It measures a whole range of things which contribute to this human development index, the economic growth, social standards, the uh, adult literacy, and a whole range of the life expectancy, a whole range of aspects are put into this development index. And among the top five nations in the world on that UN index are, are free of our our close European cousins, Ireland, Iceland, Norway, and the top three out of the first five. Now these countries, of course, are affected by the global forces that are blowing throughout the world at the present moment, just like the larger neighbours, but all recent evidence would tell you they'll rebound quickest and strongest from the current difficulties. And these countries are, are not just cousins, they are neighbours of Scotland. Uh, the distance from Scotland to either Ireland off our west coast or Norway off our east coast is rather less than that from Boston to New York. Uh, which is why it's interesting for Scotland that we look out of what I term the arc of prosperity uh, to the west, to the north, to the east of Scotland are small European nations which top the United Nations index of success and prosperity. So the question is why have these nations experienced uh, such wonderful success uh, over the last generation? And why, for that matter, today, in 2008, there are 200 or so nations in the world when a century ago there was only 50? Uh, and here we can turn to uh, Professor Tom Nairn, or for that matter to Harvard's own Professor Alberto Lucina, uh, and others like them who see the emergence, effectively, of a, a new deal for small countries at the very heart of globalization. During the, certainly the first half of the last century, and perhaps earlier, and perhaps even arguably later, uh, small countries, small nations faced two major disadvantages in the global system. Uh, one was guaranteeing their security, which could be quite difficult, and the second was gaining access to the international marketplace. However, over time, global markets have opened to countries large and small, while the threats to international security do not come by and large from territorial acquisition, but from international terrorism. And in this environment, effectively the disadvantages of smaller nations have disappeared, and they're now exercising the very considerable economic strengths, flexibility, speed of decision making, the ability to define clear national interests in pursuit of a clear economic strategy. Now, where this occurs, and perhaps this is the ideal spot in the world for it to occur, within the framework of a European Union and single marketplace of 500 million people, uh, then we see the optimum, the ideal environment uh, for the emergence of small nations taking and making the most of that comparative advantage. Now, it's against that backcloth that the case for an independent Scotland has re-emerged. It's a case in terms of its politics I'll make tomorrow at the University of Virginia, the homeland of Thomas Jefferson, making that connection between the Declaration of Abroad and the <coughs> Declaration of Independence. But going back to the subject of today's talk, let's go back to what conclusion should American business draw from this new pattern of globalization and these global winners, these small nations who have uh, excelled in economic performance as a result of the globalization forces.